how many of you saw Ready Player One? The movie was a success, so I would assume the majority of you did. The concept of a reality that people can choose to live in, and in doing so, abandon our own, is not a novelty for our world either. Various games have successfully made their most devoted players transcend the barrier between reality and video game throughout the years. Those gamers who made the step created a second life for themselves, in which they sunk thousands of hours in order to make it as authentic as possible. I will put MMORPGs like World of Warcraft at the peak of the pride list for such achievements. If this is a good thing or not, it is up to each and every single one of you to decide. My focus today lies on the difference everyone saw between the Oasis, the world from Ready Player One, and any experience similar in the present world. The difference exists, even if theoretically they are not so different. And as for me, the biggest factor to differentiate the two was the unity present in the Oasis. Every single interactive medium that was digital was connected. All of them shared a common lobby and a common avatar, making the connection between the player and that projection of himself exponentially more powerful. This is what made me curious, initially, about Core. I am not paying much attention to the ads at the beginning of the YouTube videos I watch, simply skipping them more often than not. But this caught my eye, because the concept of not a game, but a game hub sounds fascinating with the players that can create whatever style of experience they want, and then everything ties back to the core game hub. More importantly, however, it interests me because it is backed by Epic Games, the producers of the most successful engine used to create games in the market, the Unreal Engine. So having both the idea behind of it and the technology, this could easily be the closest experience to Ready Player One our world can currently provide. But was it executed correctly? Hello travelers, my name is Peta. And in this report, we will answer the question What is Core, the video game, all about? A disclaimer before starting this video Because you surely saw a lot of paid advertisement for this game on this platform already I am here to reassure you that I am not sponsored or affiliated with Epic Games in any way And that all the opinions you will hear are mine and my only I have an obsession with menus. So naturally, the first thing I did, before even understanding any kind of basic mechanics the game had, I jumped into the profile menu and started exploring. I selected myself an icon that looks like the gold rank icon from League of Legends, which is appropriate for me since I never got past gold. I introduced my YouTube channel's name and my Twitter at wrote a random description that adverts my YouTube channel, and then it's time for the most important part in video games, character creation. The Cyber Samurai had basically no competition when it came to choosing the basic character, and for some godforsaken reason, I decided Cyan and White is a good combination of colors for such a character. It already happened, so let's proceed. The mounts 
are pretty good looking, but we'll find out that they are unfortunately of use only in the main hub. With everything set, as we are transported to the main lobby, we are accompanied by music for the first time. I don't have any clue why the menus don't have any kind of music, but they should probably add some. And here is my cyan white robot samurai, riding a dark, noble looking horse. I guess it receives points for being the only game where I'll ever see this. There is an infinite amount of things you can mix and mash in this game, creating a madness, very pleasant to look at. Let us have a ride around it. Walking around the lobby with no purpose is funnier than expected. But alright, I got distracted enough by the joyful atmosphere of the lobby. It is fun, but it is not what we are here for. So where are the games? Everywhere is the answer, but for clarity we will use the page entitled Play in the menu, instead of the portals, because I would like to have an idea of what am I doing. Let us start browsing. The first game we will have a look at today is My Hero Academia, because the anime is fun and the universe there seems like a good base for a game. Since it will come into play later, I am mentioning now that all the games I am playing have this very important icon in the corner, making them active games. We will see why that matters after we are done with the games and talking about the progression system in the game hub. But for now, let's dive into the Hero Academia, the game. A very nice thing with every single one of these games is that they will be using the same avatar we created in the overworld, creating that link between player and his character I was talking about in the beginning. What is this game about now? Well, we found ourselves into this city, inspired by the world of My Hero Academia, and we're kinda shown here off context. But we have a guiding tutorial, so let's follow that. Also, the music is quite nice at setting ambience, so that is nice. First, the game tells me to go to the gym, probably being a cyber samurai still implies working out sometimes. But before that I have a menu, so I will look through it. We have stats, pretty classic RPG stuff, a quirk which is my Hero Academia world for superpowers, party which I can test because I have no available friends, and codes which I don't have any clue what is. We go to the gym and apparently punching this punching bag rewards me levels and skill points. Near me is this guy that I am certain uses an auto clicker to grind levels while eating or something. Anyway, I attribute some skill points and we move on. This game seems to have a morality system managed by a fame count. The higher or lower the fame, the more heroic or notorious you become. My mission apparently now is killing some thugs. The problem here is this guy who is level 30 and grinds all the thugs. And since if a player kills a thug it is dead for everyone and the kill is not shared between all the players who damaged it, the kill goes only to the one that dealt the final blow, for now completing this mission is basically impossible. Let us move on. The enhanced movement seems to be quite confusing, because I saw that guy fly above half a map but I can't do that, so in terms of movement I am stuck between running and this mini dash I have that I use by pressing shift but it is draining stamina, so even with that, walking around takes a bit. Both heroes and villains have a daily reward based on their fame. I have zero, so I don't get anything. 
I don't like this guy. Also, there is a 1v1 arena, but I can't access it because it's level locked. And I don't feel like grinding tonight. And now the game explains its most important mechanic, the quirk system. So, you gamble for quirks. And in order to spin the wheel once, you need either 5k, 100k, or 1 million in-game currency, yens. From what I saw, they are not so easy to grind, but that is not where the problem is. The problem is that the inventory for the quirks is a premium perk, which translates in. If you buy a new quirk, aka a new spin of the wheel, which is random, your previous one disappears. And I do get that the developers of this game are probably a few people and also they get half the revenue for any purchase so they are well paid, but this system is predatory. Anyway, I spin the wheel and I get an earth style quirk. I can only use one ability, I will look into how to unlock the rest later. Now to the training rounds we go. And in the tutorial box it was written that some quirks are inefficient depending on the challenge. So I obviously choose one that is not recommended for me and I am stuck here now. It wants me to put down the flames, but I cannot because that would require only certain elemental quirks. So I die burned down by the flames. And those are basically all the mechanics the game has. So I start roaming around. I test the minimap and it seems competent. And it proves that the map is not very gigantic. And then I go back to the quest with the tugs. No one around to take my kills now, fortunately. So let's try and kill some tugs. And this guy beats me very hard. After being hunted by another grinder that steals all the tugs, I realized that my only option in defeating a tug 1v1 is to kite them. Lovely. While at it I understand that unlocking new abilities is stats dependent and is particular for every single quirk. For instance, this quirk of mine needs 150 durability for the next ability and 150 or 300 strength for the next ones. I built agility so far so we are not really on the same wavelength, which means I can roll a dice for a new one. I get a quirk called gas, which drops my frames to like 15 when used. So another note, if you plan on trying this out and don't have a very good computer, some things might lag. I change it again, and I get a rare one called solid air. This one complements my build better, being based on agility and strength, so I stick with it. After handing in the quest, I go on a walk again and I remember the training areas from earlier and how now my quirk should work in the challenge. It does no problem. I try another challenge and I am faced against a level 250 monstrosity. No more of that. I see that there are bosses on the map. So I am curious. No more of that either. And here ends the exploration of the first game. My quick impressions... Feels like a mobile RPG. Looks fun if you don't have anything to sink time in, but some grind is required before actually enjoying the content. Not really for me, but I can see why it would be enjoyable for some. Don't forget, it is free and not so hard to comprehend. Next game. For the second game, I simply chose a game that was as far from the first as possible gameplay-wise, 
because I wanted to see how much the technology of the building features of Core could be stretched without destroying the ability of a game to be fun. So I take another game that is in the active pool and boot it up. The game is called Mergelandia and is obviously about merging things. When I open it, I am immediately shown to a tutorial. Let's go! First things first, we have trees. The trees make wood. We take three acorns to make a sapling. Then from three saplings we make an actual tree. And from the trees, we make bigger trees. Sweet victory in the tutorial. Further on, we have the tutorial for merging more than three things. Merging five is basically discount. Merging some more at advantageous rates and victory. I would also like to highlight the fact that even into a game that so far seems 100% single player, there is still an emphasis on community with the leaderboard as well as the existence of seemingly community custom maps. I obviously did not get there in my short playthrough, but they exist, which is very considerate. Following up to the tutorial list is woodworking, which is saying that the wood from trees can also be merged before being collected, resulting in bigger quantities of wood given to us. We complete this tutorial by building a house, using the wood we collected. Building an economy is next, and it introduces the fog mechanic, this fog being elevated as we merge various elements. And in the mist, we find a bunch of houses. These houses give away coins, which would also be merged. These coins are used to build a fort, the next building in the game. A bit of merging of coins later, and I managed to build a fort to finish this level as well. And here is where I got bored and quit the game because it was not for me. It is fun and it seems addictive for someone into this kind of video game, but I am not. However, if you liked what you saw, I actually recommend this game, because its mechanics can be put to great use. It has a little bit of mobile phone game feel, be warned. Next. And now for my last pick. I chose a survival game. Island Survival. It also is in alpha so it sounds like a recipe for disaster. But I am down to lower my expectations on this one because it is probably made by one or two dudes. Let's see. Long and behold. We have the first game that has a cutscene to begin it. Nothing incredible, but it shows the guy who did this care. We are on a plane, an engine falls, people start freaking out and making Sims animations, and then we fade to black and wake up in gameplay. Waking up on a beach, by following a marker we arrive at a safe zone, and my shock is considerable. This game has a safe zone for all the players in the instance. This means that, in a given zone that is also the zone benefiting of protection, all the players must cooperate. And also, since there is no building, mechanics is the only place where the player has a base, so everyone must be here. I don't like praising a survival game in alpha, but this idea sounds actually great for building a small community. Moving on, I get to my plot, see that I must collect some wood, I go around and get some branches. With them, I upgrade my base camp to level 1. I now have a bed to look like a dead body while sleeping. <laughs> my god, this animation is hilarious. Next I learned that farming exists, but it takes some time so it's not the best deal. Classic survival elements, collect resources, craft tools, collect resources faster. You already know. Back to the camp after doing that for a bit longer, I can again upgrade my camp. Looks comfortable, but I am still more of a dead body than a sleeping robot. 
This guy comes to make me a visit. And then proceeds to slash me with a katana. People nowadays. I get a research table which is used to learn recipes. For items you don't have a recipe for. I don't have such things now, so move on. The map is available now. And I love how the mechanics of this game are not directly thrown at the player, but instead explored individually and then appear on the right side of the screen as they are discovered. I go ahead and collect some more resources. In the process, I understand that the survival mechanics are not really balanced. Both thirst and hunger are completely filled by fruits like coconuts and apples, and chopping a tree gives away several of them. After collecting some resources, I upgrade my camp again, and in a very non-shocking twist, I get a chest. I dump everything inside, and since I am bored of grinding, it's time to explore. The map doesn't seem so big, so let's see how far we get before we get slain. I love seeing what my fellow instance colleagues build on their plots. This game can get a bit advanced, I see. I see a shark and I decide not to engage him because I'll probably get shrunk to pieces. As I am walking towards that interesting looking tower, I can't miss the fact that this environment actually looks pretty good. The power of the Unreal Engine is still unmatched. A zombie is here. I feel like I'm gonna die, so I go swimming to safety. Or rather towards more danger. There are dinosaurs on the other side of the river, so we already went from regular farming to zombies, and now to ancient beasts. If it's perfectly with the general madness of this game, not gonna lie. I am chased by a dinosaur, and the movement speed of my character is apparently high enough to outrun a hungry predator. Cyber Samurai 1, Dinosaur 0. While trying to find what on the map seems like a chest, I encounter this pair of living legs. It drops nothing after killing it, but I am satisfied I did it anyway. After failing some parkour and falling off a cliff, I am treated with a very enjoyable image. A policeman zombie fighting a dinosaur. After killing the dinosaur, the policeman sees me, but he is still no match for my amazing cyber samurai. So I kill him and get some bullets. Finally a new item. Since my treasure hunt went bust, I decided to go home, so back to walking. I stopped by to kill another zombie before going home, this fight being actually fun as a result of the zombie being ranged, which made possible to dodge her attacks. Also, the granny zombie dropped a baseball bat upon her death. She could have killed me with it. Thank you for not doing so, madam zombie. I was having enough madness for a day now, so I was planning to quit. But before doing so, I actually got blessed with one of the sweetest moments in recent gaming. The guy with the katana from earlier comes back and he offers me a golden apple. Totally for free. And this is what I meant when I said this game can build communities. I did not take the apple, because I won't be coming back anytime soon. But for someone who wants to, this game could actually be a very good time, both with friends and you are all on the same instance, or even meeting new people and existing in the same world. This was easily my favorite game out of all of them. Before jumping to conclusions, there is another thing we need to have a look at. The progression of the core game. 
So, the currency of the game is called RPs. No, no, these ones. Yeah, these ones. Reward points. And having a look at the shop, everything can be bought off with RPs. And the way to gain RPs is very simple. Playing games. Do you remember the thing I was talking about earlier with the active games? Well, if you play those games, you are rewarded simply for playing. Also, there are daily challenges that will give you RPs. I am genuinely shocked the cosmetics are not locked behind paywalls, honestly. It's something I have not seen in a while. The skins are expensive in their own rights and the RP are not easily achievable. But then I also could not find a way to buy RP with the premium currency. That seemed to be exclusive to the paid content in the other games for now. So this progression is very fair and it does that thing where if you see someone with a cool costume, it meant he really played the game and worked for it. Not that his mom or dad got a big bank account which for me is infinitely better. So, final thoughts regarding core? Well, it has potential. This game is as good as its community will be, but I think we have something here. If more talented people decide to press that create button and make awesome games, core will thrive. And I have not tried a fraction of all of them yet, so these games might already be here. I will definitely come back to this game from time to time to see how it evolves and, while waiting for new games to come out, I genuinely think you will have a great time with Core. Rating wise, I am giving it a yellow star and will say that it was a pleasant surprise. With that being said, my the wind guide travelers. See you next time. Bet out.